it's really interesting, like this little chase that we're going through today. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, the church is essentially the same, but as you can see over here, uh, the roof is gone. So this was probably bombed out or burned out sometime during the war, like about the time when all the Colombian fathers were massacred inside. And so, but other than that, this tree is gone, and that tree that you see over here is still that same tree over here. So I'd say, largely, it's still pretty intact. So there you can see that uh, this marker was put up here to remember the American priests that were killed, and the many thousands, to the tune of over 100,000 civilians, I believe, uh, in February of 1945. A lot of people don't know that Manila was completely destroyed in 1945. This comes as news to many people. And I actually have to say, like up to around even 10 years ago, it was news to me too. <laughs> Here's another one of the uh, monuments for the people who were killed in 1945. And these are few and far between, huh? I mean, you'd think that if more than 120,000 people living in your city were killed, that you'd find a much more interesting way to memorialize these people than to a crappy statue. No, it's not so bad that nobody even remembers it. It's even worse that it's not even a national holiday. It looks pretty much the same. Why again is it likely that this one survived? Well, Malate was kind of far already from where all the general bombing was happening by the Americans. The Americans were basically shelling Intramuros and the downtown Ermita area to flush out the Japanese. So this was already far. So in Malate, it was mostly really the massacres of the Japanese Imperial Army, which is how most people died, and by burning the houses. So a lot of the cement buildings of the Malate area kind of fared better than their more northern counterparts in Ermita and Binondo and How are you? I was Yeah. Actually, the composition is nice. The composition of the pictures is nice. It's really hard because there are a lot of trees. So, it's hard to compose. It's hard to compose. Well, that's definitely that corner. This is definitely that building. Right? This has to be that building. What other building could it be? Okay, we're now standing in front of Manila City Hall, uh, looking at the clock tower of Manila City Hall. And if we compare the photograph here in my hand to the reality in front of us, you can see that the fourth and fifth floors did not exist yet. See that plinth here? The entrance? That entrance. So you can see that right beside it, the third and fourth floors were actually added after the war. See? Not there. And now it's there. I mean, one thing nice about this is that we're actually kind of doing what I call historical and visual archaeology. We're really digging up a city from the past, trying to come up with uh, the roots and the, the bustrophedons. Okay, that's a really strong word. Um, $10 word. The bustrophedons of Manila. Bustrophedons, a bustrophedon is the path that an ox takes when he grazes on grass. So apparently every day, apparently, oxen always graze in the same direction using the same path. So Bastrophodon is also can be used in terms of city planning or architectural terms as the path that people take when walking through a particular area. 